Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Destination Unknown, where the only thing certain is uncertainty. I am Josh Elliott. And, and I'm me, Blake I have the Connor. Lovely, yes, we have the lovely Blake Connor as well. Tis I. The two people that you were expecting the most are the two people that you got. Yes, yes. <laughs> there are no surprises here. Uh, despite the fact that the podcast is named Unknown, I would like every intention to be known five steps in advance. <laughs> yes, so if you would like to look in the description for a conversation that you are most interested in, you can find that conversation in a timestamp, and then your destination will be known. most certainly be known. <laughs> so maybe this isn't a good name for the podcast. It's all right. <laughs> I, I am perfectly fine with it. Okay, so one thing that Blake and I were discussing uh, before we did this podcast was just the podcast itself and, like, the format of it. And we're just curious, um, like, what you guys would be most interested in. Mm -hmm. Because we understand totally that, like, it's quite the commitment to just click on to, like, a 45 to an hour, 45 minute to an hour long like, mm -hmm. video that is, well audio only yeah we pitched the idea we pitched the idea to each other of potentially doing a much shorter podcast like 15 to 20 minutes that really only chronicles one topic so basically what we're asking is do you prefer the longer form do you prefer the shorter form just let us know in the comments please we we see and tr we see everything and we try to respond to as many of them as we can we very much appreciate the feedback so if you comment we'll see it now josh it is my understanding that there was a big award show last night. Is that correct? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There was. What do you think that so, was? Was it the four square so, champion? Because I was that for quite a while. Okay. Absolutely not. It is the it is the award show that us film geeks are uh, just frothing at the mouth over. <laughs> and that is the Oscars. Ooh, that's crazy. So, so I... I didn't catch much of the Oscars at all, well, I'll be honest. that's all right. I didn't catch any of them, so <laughs> we sound so I, qualified to talk about this. Well, see, <laughs> here's the thing. I looked through all the nominations, and normally I do really care about mm -hmm. the Oscars. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just interested to see, like, what's going to win awards, like, like what actors that I like are potentially going to win. Yeah. And, uh, like, I'm usually more, like, with it, mm -hmm. with that stuff. But this year, like, this year I just didn't watch a majority of the movies that were nominated for things. Did you see Bohemian Rhapsody? So I haven't seen Bohemian you, okay. Rhapsody. Okay, because that is the only film that I really wanted to talk about because it, it won a few awards, um, two of which I think it deserved, one of which I do not think it deserved at all. Um, so Bohemian Rhapsody actually won uh, let's see, Best Sound Editing. Uh, best okay. leading actor for uh, Rami Malek, and then best mm -hmm. film editing. I disagree hardcore with best film editing. I think that the movie was edited very strangely. I don't really think it was cohesive. It it really sort of jumped around, but that's fine because it won an Oscar. They don't care about my lowly opinion. Um, yeah, no, like that is a movie that I really wanted to see, but it, it just never happened. So there's like, there's something about the movie. There's something about the movie that really rubbed people, rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And it did afterwards for me because I was not aware of this. But the film is set to be like a biopic of Freddie Mercury's life um, and sort of his uh, his arrival in Queen and sort of how he shaped um, the music industry and how their band shaped the music industry. But it does a few things very different and it changes history a little bit. It sort of alters the timeline of uh, when Freddie Mercury got AIDS because I, I knew that he acquired AIDS and like that's that's how he died but it sort of changes it around for a dramatic feeling but nothing in the movie tells you that they like sort of twisted history and a lot of people were okay. upset about this because it sort of sets a dangerous precedent for what biopics are in the future you know like what you expect when you watch a movie like that like they they twisted the truth and like i understand if they did it for dramatic effect and i totally see why they did it but it's just a dangerous thing to do because people go in and they expect everything that they see to be truthful because like 95 percent of what happens in that film is like 
it, it actually happened according to like the timeline. And at the end, yeah. it ends with like these cards about like what happened with, um, you know, the other bandmates and like what everybody else went on to do. So like, if you just watched it, you'd think that it's totally a true story. Yeah. And it, that is, that is something interesting where it's like, what if his family and friends went to see the movie and they just got completely turned off by the fact that like, it's not accurate. Like, yeah, well, I know that the like, other, the other bandmates, uh, from Queen were the ones like involved in helping with production. So I think that they okay, had a hand. Cool. I think so. Something to note too is that like as a like a huge rock star, I'm sure that Freddie Mercury had a sordid past that they probably didn't want his legacy smeared. You know what I mean? Like they probably didn't yeah. want to put in all the terrible, terrible things that he did. Like the the movie touches on some of that stuff, but it's not like a a hard hitting biopic of like oh here are some of the smutty terrible things freddie mercury did like more than anything it's just kind of a feel-good movie with some good well, music if, if it was that why would anybody go to see it I, I think a lot of people would still go to see it like I, if I st- it was all about just like you know but that like controversial thing well like, but I don't, I don't know. the only the only thing is the reason people are upset is because that is the life that he lived. You know, it wasn't all glorious and all sunshine. Like, he did live a life like that. So, like, it's not no, like yeah. it's fake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it just felt like they glossed over it. Um, I personally very much enjoyed the movie. Um, the things that they did with... I, I thought it was fantastic the way that he sang. Like, he really embodied Freddie Mercury. Like, in the sense uh-huh. of, like, when he's singing, they're using vocals from Freddie Mercury. Um, like, actual Queen songs. But you'd be convinced that he was singing them. In the film, like okay. just the lip syncing yeah, and the performance is excellent. I was curious about that. Like, I assumed it was lip syncing because, like, you can't really fake Freddie Mercury. Yeah, no, 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 like, no, no. Um, yeah, there's a video though online of um, the Live Aid performance, which basically is what the film leads up to, and you can watch side by side. I saw a video of Rami Malek's performance uh, side by side with the actual performance by Freddie Mercury, and he just like memorize that like down to like the movements and the body just like if you watch them side by side you'll know that he put a lot into that performance like he recreated that yeah it's really cool um i don't know much else about any of the other films that were involved um yeah i so the only real um category that i even cared about this year was um the best animation which uh, like strangely enough is usually the category I care least about. Yeah. But like two of my favorite movies from the year. Um, well, I guess I can't say that entirely, but uh, the Isle of dogs, the Wes Anderson movie. Ooh, yeah, that was a good and one. And then um, Spider-Man, Spider-Man the spider. Yeah, I like, knew that's a I, real good one. I like, I just wanted one of those movies to win just because I love those movies. And then with Isle of dogs, like I love Wes Anderson. Um, so I was happy Spider-Man won that, um, which I mean is warranted because I think it was. One oh, of the it was best so it was so like you don't often go into films and see such a unique style. You know, like a lot of yeah. films that you go to see are kind of uh, bland and not bland in the sense that they're not different, but it's just like they they look sort of generic. So like if I were to take any Illumination film ever created, because I hate them, uh, you know, The Secret Life of Pets or The Despicable Me or The Grinch or uh, the Minions, or any of those. It looks like a Pixar movie with no soul. And then you compare yeah. that to Spider-Man, Into the Spider-Verse, and you just see how different it is and how they meshed these different styles of animation. Like how the uh, Peter Porker was 2D animation, you know? Like, versus... I, I don't even know what like the rest of the animation was. It was it was just so different, I couldn't even classify it. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. But it, it was just done so well that, like, it was just so cool. Yeah. What but, would what would you say your favorite movie of 2018 was, if you had to pick one? So, 2018 for me, like, I watched so many movies in 2018. Yeah. Um, partially because I had movie pass most of the year. Okay. Before but, it um, kind of all came crashing down for that poor, yeah, poor company. Yeah, before movie pass uh, <laughs> ended. Movie pass, like, Pulled in the future the rug is going to be one of those things we look customers. at and people. Like, movie th- movie pass in the future is going to be one of those things that we look back at, and people aren't going to believe that it was real. Yeah, because it it, it, was it like, couldn't exist. <laughs> it was like, wait, you're playing how much money a month for 
unlimited free movies. <laughs> like, that's not a thing. Yeah, no, it doesn't exist. Like... <laughs> and but their yeah, company soon learned so that. so many. Yeah, so many movies this year that I really loved. And I just want to name a bunch of movies that I really liked. But, um... So, we talked about Into the Spider-Verse already, which I really loved. I thought it was great. And then we kind of talked about Avengers Infinity War last week. Um, well, the last podcast, at least. Yeah. Um, and then, like, Black Panther came out this year, and that was obviously good. Yeah. Um, Incredibles 2, I thought, was an, a decent sequel. It wasn't crazy. Well, I mean, it, it's uh, just, like, so hyped up. Like, how can... I mean, yeah. people waited so long for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Ready Player One, The Mule, uh, um, you're, you're then, um, Mission Impossible Fallout for me. Oh, yeah. So oh, good. So, best, so good. One of the, probably the best, I, I'll, I'll go out on a limb and say, for me at least, it was the best action movie that I've ever seen. Yeah, it, it was just incredibly entertaining. Um, even more movies, like, I saw Game Night this year. Um, the Post, which is a movie I the, wouldn't have seen oh, if no, I didn't the, have movie pa- movie pass, but like I saw it because I had movie pass and I loved it. Like yeah, no, the Post was movie. Th- that was one of the did was that nominated for for Oscars? I don't think it was. I don't really? think it was nominated for anything. See, cause, because when I watched that movie, that's all I thought. Like I thought, man, this movie is. It felt to me like Oscar bait. If anything, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like something that would really. Um, oh well, actually, I just found out the post was December twenty second, twenty seventeen. Oh, okay. So well, that's, that's a fair point because I I was I thought about it and I was like I thought it did go up for some Oscars. Yeah, well, that was just my mistake. Yeah, um, no, it's it's okay. I saw it in twenty eighteen. That's I mean it, it would have still <laughs> but, been it would have still been playing in twenty eighteen. I just yeah. I wanted to look it up because I was I was confused. Yeah. Was Deadpool two twenty eighteen? Deadpool two was, was twenty eighteen. Yes. Um Avengers yeah. Infinity War by far. It's for me it's between Infinity War and Mission Impossible Fallout. Okay. So for me, uh I, both of those movies are very high on my list. But I was actually going to say that uh a Quiet Place might be my favorite movie of 2018. Really? Okay. Because, like, I've just never seen a movie like that. No, it was like, very... When you talk about style, like we were talking oh, about before. it was extremely stylized. And just... I've also never had a, a theater experience like that. Like, that theater was silent. Like, and it just added so much to it. Because well, we were watching it with so many people, and nobody dare made a sound it would be wrong to make a noise when you walked into a theater with a sign outside that said a quiet place you know (laughs) i think people thought that was like instead of the movie title they thought it was instructions for when they walked in (laughs) (laughs) that that's funny um but yeah if i had to if i had to put a label on it favorite movie it would either be spider verse uh infinity war um mission impossible or a quiet place like those are my four like probably favorite movies from this year Mm. um now i i just i just thought of something we were we were discussing uh, a little bit before the podcast i was telling you i didn't know what my least favorite movie was of the year and i didn't want to sit here and bumble like a fool but i know Oh, what my I know, least where, favorite I know, movie of I, the year was. I know too. I want to talk about one one thing before we get to that. <laughs> but so every podcast has got to come up. <laughs> every podcast. So, like I mentioned previously, um, I saw a lot of movies this year, and shockingly, most of them were fantastic. Yeah. One of them that wasn't fantastic <laughs> though is. <laughs> A movie called Rampage. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Hold on. Hold the phone. So, I, there might be a tie. Rampage? There might be a tie for what movie I hate the most. Did you see Rampage? Oh, I saw Rampage, and never have I ever. <laughs> it felt, so leaving that movie, like, I felt like The Rock himself. I went in because of his charismatic smile, and by the time I Absolutely. left, it felt like he punched movie. me in both of my kidneys and left I me to, to die. That- I went to that movie for The Rock and Jeffrey Dean Morgan, and man, what a disappointment! Oh, the fact that it ha- the fact that it has a six point one out of ten on IMDb makes me want to gouge out the eyes of every film <laughs> critic who gave it above a zero because that movie was so horrible. Everything about it 
Like, there was nothing redeeming about it. Like, I went in thinking there would be, like, cool action, you know? Like, there would yeah. be cool... Like, at least it would be on the nose. Like, it understands what kind of movie it is. Because, you know, you've seen films like that. Like, The Fast yeah, and the Furious. Yeah, you go to, like, Transformers or yeah, something. Yeah, Transformers like... or, like, The Fast and the Furious. Or these movies that are, like... They, they understand what they are and they understand who their audience is. This movie had none of that going for it. Um, <laughs> Rampage was absolutely terrible. Um, I left the film... Just, like, feeling sick to my stomach. Yeah, see, I went to that movie and... See, okay, so I... No offense if anybody, like, that's listening likes this movie. No, or full offense. Any, any of the movies. Full offense. Okay, <laughs> I don't like saying that because... No, it, you can, you like, can, you can make try... that claim. If you if you want to say that for, for yourself, but you can't speak for me. Anybody who liked Rampage You're is right. no friend of mine. <laughs> I... I, I try when I go to movies to find something that I can like and appreciate. And I usually do because, like, I watch movies and I'm thinking about a lot of different things. Like, I'm just watching the movie for what it is and in tr trying to enjoy that. But then also, like, the filmmaker side of me, like, in appreciates certain things that other people might overlook. Yeah. Um, but with that being said, <laughs> this movie and the movie we're about to mention didn't have much going for it. No. Uh, the top, the first review that I see online uh, says, and I quote, it's aggressively dumb, and I'd feel safe in the assumption that everyone was in on the joke if it weren't for the absence of any good ones by Emily Yoshida of Vulture. And Emily, <laughs> I applaud you for that because I, I couldn't put it in words better myself. Jeffrey Dean Morgan meanders into every scene. Yes, he does. Like he just Absolutely. like he doesn't look like he belongs at one point in the film. He's got his <laughs> his back arched like he does as Negan, and he he has this weird cowboy persona that I just yeah. didn't understand. Yeah, his character didn't make a lot of sense in that movie, which no. makes me sad because I like him. He's a very charismatic guy. Yeah, no, no, no. Well, but so like, is The Rock. I thought it was yeah. impossible for me to dislike something that The Rock was in until I saw Rampage because there are so See, many fantastic wanted... Rock films. I think the movie would have been better if they would have just fully embraced what it was and just, like, had different WWE fighters <laughs> that, like, controlled different monsters and stuff. And, like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just think that's such a funny idea. The the villains were... Like, you the, got John Cena over here yeah. and The Undertaker over here. The, the villains, like, I think, were the, were the worst part of the movie. They were just so boring and uninspired. Uh, and the I've, I've seen... Uh, what was her name? the the lead the lead villain. It was um, I don't know her name. It was a woman, but I'll tell you, I've seen I've seen pieces of wood act better than she did in that film. It oh was gosh, it was absolutely <laughs> atrocious. Um, yeah, I will waste no more of my life talking about this film. I want to get to the coup de gras. I want to talk about <laughs> Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom because it's been on everybody's mind and I hate it. We refuse to let it go. <laughs> we really do. <laughs> it's just, I've never been so aggressively disappointed. When I say, yeah. I mean, like, I left the theater filled with animosity. And the worst part is... I remember you called me and ranted about it for like 20 minutes. I didn't even answer. You just left me a voicemail. Be because I, I had to get my... Steam and the worst part is... So that was the... I had... It was when I just came back from... No, 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 no. See, I did answer and we talked about it, but you talked about it vaguely to not spoil it. And then you called me again and left me like a really <laughs> long voicemail that was the spoiler-filled rant. <laughs> And then, despite my best judgment, I went and saw it anyway. <laughs> oh, my God. And the thing, like, the, I liked Jurassic World, the first one. I liked it. You know, it's not a perfect it okay. movie. It's not a perfect. I said I liked it. You know, I never, <laughs> yeah. I never made any claims that it was phenomenal. But, like, I enjoyed it. Like, the fact that they rebooted Jurassic Park. I was like, I'm okay with this film. Jurassic World 2 takes everything that Jurassic Park was. And forgive me for my language, but shits down its throat. That's what it did for me. I've just never seen a franchise spit on the graves of the previous like <laughs> classic movies as hard and as viciously as this movie did for the Jurassic Park franchise. It it is like, so true. Like regardless of how you feel of the new Star Wars movies, like there have been some less than stellar ones. Yes. But like 
Oh my gosh! Talk about the death of a <laughs> great franchise. Um. So, and the worst part for me is I had just come back from California from a vacation, and this was the first time that I'd seen uh, my girlfriend Rachel in probably two, two and a half weeks. I hadn't seen her in a while, and so I stopped to see her in Westfield, Indiana, and we went on a little movie date, and the movie was Jurassic World Two. And I remember leaving that movie, and she was like, "So, how did you like it?" And I was like, "Do you do you want my honest opinion?" And she said yes, and I said no. Do you want my like we're we've we've had a good time. Like I'm happy to see you, but do you want my honest to god opinion? She's like, what well, was it like that bad? And then I proceeded to just like lay into the film for probably much longer than I needed to. And I could tell that she if she heard me right now, still ranting about it, like <laughs> like seven months later, she'd just shake her head. She'd probably break up with me right now because I just still haven't gotten over how god awful that movie was. Does she know that we talk about it on every podcast? Well, you know, for, I don't know if she's uh, been listening since we rebooted the podcast. She knew that... I don't think there's been one. I really don't think that there's been one podcast in which Jurassic World wasn't brought up. I would like to explore that and see if that's true. <laughs> I think we... Because if not, that's so funny. I'm pretty sure in the last podcast we did, at the end, at one point I started screaming and foam came out of my mouth about Jurassic World. It's, it's just... Well, that's because I brought it up with, like... <laughs> without any warning and you just didn't want to hear it i just did it for the joke oh well let's let's talk about something that i actually enjoy um something something that both of us enjoy actually um absolutely i went to uh what was that was that this past weekend yeah this week well well well, not okay okay, like a, a little over a week ago now so not like because this, this is coming out on Tuesday, so not like this past weekend, but our, our audience doesn't care about the chronology of this. So recently, I was with Josh in Tennessee, and uh, we played we played a good old game uh, called Secret Hitler. You know, Hidden Fuhrer, Crouching Tiger, all of that <laughs> nonsense. Um, yeah, so if you don't know what Secret Hitler is, it is for you board game nerds out there a traitor style board game mm. uh where you have secret roles and you're trying to figure out like who's who and it's kind of similar to like mafia but it's like more mafia strategic or and werewolf less random and way better yes oh it's uh, <laughs> probably so like a- anytime i talk about it in public i feel like i'm on the verge of being put on a watch list because of the yeah. things that we that we have to say, you know, I I think I am on a watch list because every time I play this game, I text you, "Let fascism reign." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the little the little webcam on my computer, the light just turned green, so the FBI's watching again. <laughs> They're like, "Oh, he's going on another fascism rant. Let's hear it this time." Um, basically, the object of the game is there are two. Uh, political parties, fascists and liberals. And there is a president and a chancellor which moves around and the ultimate goal of the game is to play policy cards. There are fascist policy cards and liberal policy cards. And the so basically everybody has a secret role in a party affiliation. You can be a liberal, you could be a fascist, or ding ding, you could be the secret Hitler. And you know, as much as it pains me to say and as much as the little green light on my computer shouldn't hear it it's it's pretty fun to play the role of hitler in this game oh it's my favorite i i I am not a nazi let me clarify but i actually don't know if it is i think my favorite is being liberal but so i really think the thing that's so much fun about this game josh is just how it sort of um it, it brings out the best and the worst in people yeah absolutely it's ex- Absolutely. it's exhausting because we played it from probably 7 p.m. to midnight, and yeah. we just spent a solid five hours lying and manipulating, and like and dis- screaming and s- at one another. Oh yeah, there was a point. Um, so to those of you who aren't there, which is all of you, there was a point <laughs> <laughs> at which Josh and I were we were on opposite ends of the table, and we were on the same team, but we didn't know it, and for almost yes. the entirety. Almost the entirety of the match, we were locked in a screaming match. We were interrupting one another. We were throwing out insults. We were making wild accusations about one another's character. See, the thing is, they weren't even wild, because both of our arguments were, like, 
very solidly and like, we both based believed in logic. It. We both and believed we were just it. both thoroughly convinced that the other was a no good, dirty liar. <laughs> it's it's so interesting though, because like it is the only game in existence, at least that I have played, that you can say just such horrible things to one another mm-hmm. and scream at people, mm-hmm. and then afterwards you're just totally fine. Mm-hmm. The like, yeah, like I played with I played with um, my friends here just the other night and. Uh, my girlfriend Rachel, she so basically what happens is you draw three cards. Um, they could be fascist. If you're the yeah, if you're the president, you draw three cards, and they could be fascist or liberal. Without showing anyone, you discard one of those cards and you hand them to your chancellor. Your chancellor discards one of those cards and plays the other. So I'm a fascist. Rachel's a liberal, and um, she said something at the beginning of the game that like. Uh, I don't know, it just, like, rubbed me the wrong way. And I told her, like, I called out immediately at the beginning of the game uh, that I would I would shoot her in-game if I got the opportunity. Because that's another thing. Um, at a certain point, you get to use a gun and kill another player. Who, so they can't speak, they can't, like, play the game anymore. But she hands me two cards. Uh, one of them is a fascist, one of them is a liberal. I play the fascist and I out her. I immediately out her. She, you know, makes her claim that I'm a liar, and I get furious. I put on a real show. You know, I make it seem (laughs) as though I've just been personally wronged by the woman that I love and that my world is shattering around me. And I tell you, if they were giving out Academy Awards in that moment, I would have got it because everybody (laughs) immediately believed me. They thought that she was a dirty liar. And for the, the rest of the game, I pretty much ran the table. The surprising thing is we still lost. But Dang. when the game was over with, um, she goes, yeah, we won. And everybody just kind of agreed, like, well, you know, we won. You still lost, even though you were a liberal. Like, we just didn't believe you. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh. Yeah. We also played Secret of Hitler this weekend. And I played with a group I hadn't played with before, so that was really fun. Mm. I was the only experienced player in the group, which kind of blows. But, like, uh, it was still really fun. Um we didn't really have any crazy experiences though uh, from this weekend, but man, there there have been some doozies. Oh where, yeah, like I I feel a little bad because like people at my school, um, like this game is very popular now amongst like my group of friends at school. Yeah, and they will just talk about it, and they'll talk about me specifically, <laughs> and they're like. That man will just lie to our face and manipulate all of us. The thing, the, and it's like, yeah, the thing you're that, absolutely right. I will. The thing that but. scares me is I. So when I play the game, I feel like my my intentions can be well hidden. But at the end of the day, like it's I'm pretty vocal no matter what. You're a very yeah. you're a very trustworthy Hitler, and I can say that from experience because you don't do anything to seem distrustworthy you speak like when you speak about things you speak objectively in the terms of everyone's interests not just your own and that makes you like that's what's scary is every i remember the the last game (laughs) we played when i was at johnson you you and i were just like begging to be the chancellor we were both liberals but we didn't know it and i was terrified that you were deceiving me again and you told me that if you were lying to me right then and there you looked me in the face and said if i'm lying to you you never have to speak to me again because i'm telling you the truth and even then even with like such a wild claim i thought (laughs) i don't know if i can my little heart's gonna get broken (laughs) It's the beauty of the game is lying to your friends. In that instance, I wasn't. But yeah, but you know, I can't say. <laughs> okay, so I don't feel bad about what I did to Rachel the other night because I remember the very first time we played the game. Um, I called her a fascist because I thought she was a fascist, and she she literally like throughout the game I just kept calling her a fascist, and by the end of it she was like, "You don't believe me," and she literally cried crocodile tears. The woman mustered tears from her eyes, and then when given the opportunity, she put that gun to my head and blew me away. She oh was a gosh. fascist. <laughs> and from that moment on, I said, I feel like I learned something about you. I feel like deep down, you ha- maybe not even that deep down, you have the capacity to be a monster. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Because never have I seen someone fake tears so easily. <laughs> that is incredible. I love it. Like, Just, this game, to, to everyone that hasn't played, like, Obviously, not everybody does this, but when we play Secret Hitler, we take it very seriously, and we, like, dim the lights and play, like, ominous music and, like, 
put a BB gun in the middle of the table, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which is what we did this weekend because uh, we played at Mark and Lexi's house. Oh, man. But, did uh, they play? So did Mark and Lexi play? They did. They did. Ooh. It was very fun. But, um, yeah, it's it's so funny. And then the, another part of the game that I love is that, you know, most of these games, like, it's a democracy kind of thing. Like, in Mafia or Werewolf or something, like, you all have to unite and decide together on who to kill. Yeah. But, no. In Secret Hitler, if it gets to the point where a player is killed, which is just a certain amount of fascist policies in play, but when it gets to that point, whoever is the president of that round makes the decision. Like, it is not a democracy anymore. No. They have a gun, and they are making a decision. So I, I know I told I know I know told you about this, but I remember um, most of the time what happens is the person with the gun is very, is very like, nervous, and they're like, oh, I don't want to shoot anybody, guys. Like, they're very, you know, like, uh, apprehensive about pulling the trigger. And usually this causes a big rift in the table because everybody is, like, pretty much gunning for their lives. They're, like, shouting and they're yelling, like, kill him, kill her, like, and then, like, spewing logic. Usually that's how it plays out. I played once with a with a good friend of mine who, as soon as he got the gun, everybody started arguing and saying, here's who you should kill. He picks it up softly, he looks across the table, and he says very softly, shut up. And we all stopped. And he stood up with this gun in his hand, which looks very realistic, mind you. We all know that it's fake, but it's still frightening because he says, get on the ground. <laughs> and we said, we said, um, what are you, what are you doing? And he said, did I stutter? And suddenly, before we know it, we're lined up in a row with our hands behind our backs, belly down, just face first into the carpet. And he puts the barrel to the back of our heads and he says, state your case. And he goes down the line, hearing us plea for our lives. And finally, he <laughs> blasts somebody. It wasn't Hitler, but he blasts somebody and he sits down. We all sit back down at the table. We resume our democracy. And we, we all look at one another and we say, yeah, that was horrifying. I thought I was That's going to die. Awesome. <laughs> I love that so much. My proudest moment of, uh, you know, killing someone <laughs> in that game. Of course. This um, is why we're on a watch list, ladies and yeah, gentlemen. Yeah, absolutely, because we say things like this. Yeah, it's fun but, to um, be Hitler. My proudest moment <laughs> killing someone was blank. <laughs> but um, <laughs> this was in a game recently. It wasn't this past weekend, but this past week. I play this game too much. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but so I was playing for the first time with our dear friend Caleb Olin. Oh, my um, good. Those I of don't... you who are fans of the channel... Um, Professor Elvin Gad from Luigi's Mansion. The I am convinced that um, man couldn't lie to me. Oh, he's not very good. <laughs> but <laughs> I just—he's just. I don't so want to say that. That's well, not, that's no, not he's just, Caleb Olin but... is just so sweet. I just don't see. I just don't see how I could look him in the face and he could convincingly lie to me. I could be wrong. Caleb Olin could be a monster for all I but, know. See, he was actually a lot better than I expected him to be. To be fair, um, but we were playing and. It got to the point where somebody had to die, and the gun was in my hand. So, I had my suspicions, but everybody, mm -hmm. like, it was a pretty good round, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like, there were no glaring fascists or anything. Yeah. And the two people I trusted the most, I had come over to me and whisper in my ear who they wanted me to kill. Um, so, I didn't do it uh, publicly. And then the two people that I suspected the most... I made them state their cases out loud and just through process of elimination and people's arguments and judging things like based on how I know the game is played. I determined in that moment who the fascists were and who Hitler was. And I took my gun and I shot Caleb Olin in the face and the liberals won. Oh, Caleb Olin and, was Hitler. Yes. <laughs> and I just felt incredible. In that moment. Well, there's I really... Like, I just felt like a master detective. Well, there's really like, nothing I more American than out. shooting a Nazi. Am I wrong? <laughs> <laughs> especially if that Nazi is, happen, happens to, to be... The, yeah. 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 So, listen, I'm proud of you. Okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wave <laughs> the American flag high over our house tonight. Um, and it makes it even better because we call our house in Muncie the Alamo. So, the flag's going to wave <laughs> high above the Alamo tonight, brother. That's oh some good gosh. stuff. What a fun game. <laughs> There's never been a board game that, like, 
has united so many people in my life. No, it like, has my, my <laughs> united so many people really in like, despicable hatred. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, my, my group of friends has never been, like, super, like, board game crazy. Like, I do have friends mm-hmm. that enjoy board games, and I'll play with them a lot. Um, I do really like board games. I very much, but, um, yeah, go ahead. But, man, Secret Hitler, like, everybody loves that game. And if you haven't played it, uh, fun fact, it is free online. Um, you can, you can play buy it. a physical copy, uh, which is obviously better because, like, you know, it's made professionally mm-hmm. like, by the people that actually make the game. But they actually offer it on their website uh, to print. For free. Uh, so you can play it for free. And so I printed it off because I don't actually own a copy. But I printed it off and then, like, spent an evening like making it nice and mm-hmm. like coloring all of the uh all of the cards and like layering them with cardboard like taping them to nice pieces of cardboard and stuff so they're a little like you know more resilient and tougher and then making like the president and chancellor like totems like just nicer like i i actually made it pretty nice i still want to see um, i still want to see a photo of that um but Oh yeah, it's, I forgot. To I've, I've told I've told um, so Nick and Julius, my friends, were the original people to share this game with me, and I honestly feel like um, what so you were familiar with the game before, but was playing it on my birthday. Is that what led you to uh, print it yourself and like start playing it at see, Johnson? See, here's the thing, and this is the craziest part about it. Like um, before playing it on your birthday. I had planned to print it out, like, from their website that week, and I never got around to it. Mm -hmm. And then I got to your house, and we played it then, and that was just the last straw for me. You're like, I "I need this game. I'm I'm making it. I love it too much. And uh, then it finally happened. But um, No, uh, we've we've spent a lot of time talking about it, but honestly, if you're listening to this podcast, I just, I cannot stress this enough. Regardless of how much you enjoy board games, find four other friends or five other friends. You can play with a maximum of maximum of ten people. I would suggest keeping it like seven or eight, and just play this game because it is so much fun. I don't think I've ever had more fun with a board game. We've put we together have put so many people onto this game. First of all, and I'd oh, like yeah. to imagine that we could put on more people with this podcast. I just want to spread it so that it gets bigger because I'd love to see the the, the community for it grow bigger it's just it sucks because when you talk about it in public people get concerned because you know you're yelling about fascism and hitler and all this <laughs> <laughs> that's part of the charm though that's what <laughs> is the uh, is the taboo aspect of it you know you're like oh i don't want to be the secret hitler no but deep down you really do yeah well <laughs> because it's one of the more fun roles in the game yeah Well, um, if there were any closing thoughts, it would be Jurassic World 2 blows. Uh, Rampage was marginally less bad. And go out, play some Secret Hitler with your friends. We'll see you later. Absolutely. Yep, see you later, guys.